Andrew Rosen. Yeah. Uh, good morning, Mr. Speaker, and may I thank you and all members of the House for joining me today in helping to bring my bill forward to its remaining stage stages on the floor of the House. I would also like to thank the committee who considered the bill in detail on Wednesday, the 8th of December last year. The discussion around the bill was insightful, and I appreciate the careful and detailed consideration that has gone into the process so that the bill can today reach this point. It is clear to see that we are truly a nation united by our love of animals and that my bill has attracted strong support from all parties, from all sides of this House and, most especially, from animal welfare organisations across the country. And so, Mr Speaker, I am pleased that the bill has progressed through the House without a single amendment and that members on all sides of the chamber value not only the spirit but also the content of the bill. I am delighted with the energy shown by so many in making sure we get this bill absolutely right so that it has the best possible impact on animal welfare across the country. Important conversations have been ongoing throughout its passage. <coughs> involving all sides of the House and key organisations outside, ultimately allowing the Bill to arrive at this final stage. As you will, you will know only too well, uh, Mr Speaker, I have been an advocate for the protection of animals my entire life, as I know you have as well, Mr Speaker, and indeed throughout, particularly throughout my 20 years as Member of Parliament. And indeed, my own dogs were Staffordshire Bull Terriers, yeah, 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 yeah. called Spike and Buster. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they were indeed the best companions anyone could have wished for. And they campaigned for me in every general election, yeah, yeah, yeah. sporting their famous Union Jack waistcoats. <laughs> I have fond memories of the Honourable Member for Buckinghamshire uh, looking after Spike in the 2001 general election. I'm delighted he's here today to, to support my bill. <laughs> and so, Mr Speaker, as we love our country, we also love our animals. And from my own experience speaking to constituents and working closely with animal welfare charities, I know the joy that animals can bring. Protecting animals is something that should unite us all. We have a duty of care to the animals we are privileged to live alongside as household pets, wild animals, farm animals and indeed all creatures of land, sea and sky. Indeed. I'm very grateful uh, to my honourable friend for giving way. He mentioned farm animals uh, in that part. I don't know of any farmers who deliberately mistreat their animals, but sometimes false accusations are made against farmers. So I know there is some concern in the farming community about the appeals process if they are given a penalty charge notice. Can he tell us a little bit more and assure the House that there is a robust appeals process uh, in his bill? Well, there absolutely has to be, and uh, my honourable friend is completely right to raise that point. The purpose of this new legislation is to deal with fairly minor offences and to act almost as guidance. Um, it's not there to deal with serious offences. There would still be the usual uh, process of dealing with the more serious offences. And I do take on board his point that when false accusations are made, there has to be a robust appeal process. And I know the Minister will take this on board in dealing with uh, the secondary legislation that comes from that. So I, I'm sure that his words uh, will be taken into account by the Minister today, and I thank him for his intervention. And so, Mr Speaker, I can, can tell the House that my, in fact, our dearly missed friend and departed colleague, Sir David Amos, shared my view of this. Yeah, yeah. Indeed, he shared, he shared all of my views on animal welfare, and he was the greatest champion of animal welfare of any Member of Parliament, uh, I think, 
I can think of. He dedicated his life to that. And we think of, of David today, um, as first day with a new Member of Parliament for Southend West, and we wish her all the success as David's successor. But no one could replace David. He was unique, and uh, we think of him all the, all the time. And his stance on animal welfare, well, it never changed. It never changed uh, throughout his 38 years in Parliament. He, in fact, introduced a private member's bill himself in 1998, which strengthened protections for horses tethered by the roadside, and through his tireless campaigning, inspired so many others to continue the fight for strengthened protection for animals. And we remember him as we carry on the fight to defend and protect animals throughout the United Kingdom. And so it has been an honour to have the opportunity to introduce a bill that will, I believe, make a real difference to the lives of animals and help promote greater understanding of welfare. This bill will directly benefit the health and welfare of this country's farmed and kept animals and also increase accountability when our country's biosecurity is put at risk. This bill introduces enabling powers so we can then apply penalty notices to the appropriate offences. My bill establishes the framework crucial to introducing these penalties through statutory instrument. Penalty notices will bolster our existing enforcement measures and give enforcement authorities more options to influence positive behaviour when it comes to caring for our farmed and kept animals, including companion animals and zoo animals. And so, as chairman of the Zoos and Aquariums All Party Parliamentary Group, I recognise that this is a welcome development for that particular sector. And having worked very closely with the excellent British and Irish Association of Zoos and Aquariums, who do so much for zoos and the care of animals in zoos and aquariums across the country, having worked for them for so many years, I know that they also agree with me that penalty notices are the right way forward. The debate at committee stage highlighted wide support for this bill and what I believe it will achieve. I have held ongoing discussions with various NGOs and I am delighted that there is a strong consensus that penalty notices will benefit this country and should be introduced. I share the same enthusiasm and excitement for this legislation, which I truly believe will be a gain for, the, for animal welfare across this country. And I am also very grateful to the organisations who have already invested their time in engaging with myself and DEFRA, considering the bill and how it will work for them in practice, and for sharing their views so that we can make this bill as effective as possible. The support of the RSPCA, Battersea Dogs and Cats Home, the National Farmers Union, Blue Cross, Cats Protection, the National Sheep Association and the National Pig Association, as well as many other animal welfare groups across the country, has been invaluable. And so I thank the honourable members once again here today for supporting this landmark bill and for many contributions that have been made at all the previous stages. I hope we can agree that this important bill should progress today so it may continue its journey in the House of Lords under the stewardship of the Right Honourable Lord Randall of Uxbridge, who has agreed to champion my bill in the other place. The well-being and safety of animals is something that I know matters to us all. So, as a nation of animal lovers, let us continue to lead the world in enhancing the cause of animal welfare. And I would like to place on record my sincere thanks to the Minister who is not here today, 
the, the Honourable Member for Bury St Edmunds, who has done so much uh, to support uh, my bill and has been very dedicated to helping ensure that the bill has reached the stage it has this morning. It has been my pleasure to work with her to ensure that this new legislation has arrived in this place today. And I thank uh, the Minister in her place for standing in and leading, uh, leading today's uh, debate as well. I would also like to thank those organisations and members who have provided such valuable care to animals, who have vocalised their support for this bill and given me full confidence that penalty notices will be a welcome addition to the enforcement of animal welfare when they become available. What about Honourable Friend of way? I will indeed, certainly. I, I thank you for, for giving way and for bringing forward this very important bill. Um, for members of, of the public listening or watching this, I think they would be surprised that actually that the, this kind of, of bill needs to be brought in. What, what changes will this make to improve and, and assist us to make sure that people are not being cruel to animals? Well, uh, the, the Honourable Member for, for Grimsby uh, makes a really important point because we need to understand the purpose of this bill. So, at present, uh, enforcing um, breaches of animal welfare laws uh, is something that has to be prosecuted. So, it has a long time it goes to court, it goes for all that processes. Uh, but many offences are very minor. Uh, they're mistakes that, that certain individuals may have made uh, inadvertently. And so, a bit like a parking ticket, it's a, it's a way of informing people that they perhaps need to make sure that they are doing things better in future and where they've done something which isn't very serious. So, it's going to give the enforcement authorities greater powers to deal with minor offences very speedily rather than to wait for it to go through long processes, and some of which, of course, never will be prosecuted because. Effectively, it runs out of time and there's not enough time to deal with the issue. So this is going to be really uh, an effective and uh, a way of dealing with something quickly. And that's really the nub of what this bill is all about. And I do believe it will increase the animal welfare, uh, the powers of the animal welfare laws to make them a lot more effective. So I thank her for her intervention. I hope I've explained uh, the background uh, very clearly to her. And so, Mr Speaker... This bill will fundamentally reform how we enforce animal welfare, biosecurity and welfare across farmed and kept animals in England. And I hope other parts of the United Kingdom will follow suit after, hopefully, this bill becomes legislation. Um, I believe it will improve this country's response to offences and strengthen our position as a world leader in the welfare of animals with whom we are privileged to share this planet. Yeah, yeah. And I sincerely hope that we will see it placed on the statute book in the very near future. This is a good bill. It will improve the lives of animals. It will guide the people of this nation into better protection and welfare of the animals we all care so much. And, Mr Speaker, I commend it to the House. Yeah. The question is that the bill be no read a third time. And I've got to say congratulations to the member in charge of this bill.